All right. Hello, and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk uh, about limiting beliefs. And so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Matt Cotty, and I am a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds and the creator of the AAA Response. So in this series, I'm, I'm really excited because I want to I dive into one of my favorite topics, you know, to really, you know, when it comes to working on myself, when it comes to working on or working with anyone, um, you know, in, in any of my programs, I love talking about beliefs and, you know, specifically like limiting beliefs that, um, you know, often hold us back in life and in one way or another, whether it's with relationships financially, um, but, but specifically when it comes to just our own health and our own mental health. So um, before we dive in, I'd really appreciate if you would take a few minutes or just a few seconds really, and just like, and subscribe as well as, um, take the time to write a comment or review for the show. It helps our algorithm, which then helps this get to people who are wrestling with this. And so by doing that, um, you know, hopefully we can get this information to more people. So it would really help us out. Thank you. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about beliefs because this is going to be a new series. And then I want to talk about a specific belief today. And then what I'm going to do is in this series, I'm going to talk about four beliefs. Now, these beliefs that I'm going to talk about just real quick are directly taken from um, the book, Letting Go by Dr. David Hawkins. And he talks about, you know, essentially these four beliefs, um, I believe in chapter two. And I wanted to just kind of speak into them because, and I want to talk to him, you know, obviously specifically around OCD and anxiety, but it doesn't mean that this, you can't take the same, you know, information here and apply it in, in different areas of your life or to different beliefs that you may be holding. So let's go ahead and start with what a belief is. A belief is just a story that you tell yourself again and again and again and again. Now, the tricky part about beliefs is that, you know, we often assume that because we're telling ourselves something that it must be true right? Or it must be correct or it must be right. Um, and be, and because we tell ourselves something enough, you know, it just, we just assume it's true. So we never challenge it. And a lot of times these beliefs kind of go on in the background or, you know, just kind of like underneath the surface, right? So, so what causes someone, let's say to, um, you know, like bury anger in their body, right? Well, if you have the belief that feeling ang angry is bad, then when you feel angry, you're going to, push it down, you know, like, but that's a, that's a belief there. And that belief may have come from growing up in a certain household where it's like, you know, you just saw a lot of anger. And so you associate it as bad. So you think feeling angry is bad. And, you know, like, does that make sense how that works? Like where it's like, it's just a story that you have, um, you know, like, you know, the very typical story is a belief in Santa Claus, right? One day you believe Santa is real and maybe another day you don't. And, and so it's the story of Santa is real and Santa is not real, right? That story, it's just like an assumption, okay? So um, when it comes to our health, though, especially our mental health, but physical health and, um, you know, relationships, money, right, uh, work, a lot of us have beliefs that hold us back. And, you know, you can, there's so many different readings we can go into uh, or books, Um you know, one of my my favorite books about beliefs is uh, the book The Big Leap by um, Gay Hendricks, and in and just you know the belief structures that he that he talks about in that book. But I want to talk about a specific belief today, and it's this idea of I don't deserve good things, because I want I want you to see how this belief, if we're holding on to this, can really impact your recovery process. So. You know, specifically in the, and I'm going to read directly here. Um, I took a little note. Um, specifically in the book, Letting Go, Dr. Hawkins talks about the belief we only deserve things through hard work, struggle, sacrifice, and effort. Okay, so that's the belief he states in the book. And I'm, you know, integrating the belief I don't deserve good things. And, and, you know, really when we overlap them, it's, I don't deserve good things unless I work hard for them. I struggle for them. I sacrifice, or I put in a lot of effort. So therefore, like I need to trade something to have good come into my life. And that could be good health. That could be, you know, and, and so that exchange is a belief. 
right? Because in, in, in the way we know something's a belief versus like a fact or a law, right? I should say, because a law is like something that just universally happens again and again and again. The question would be, have you ever had something happen really good without you doing anything? Have you ever had someone just give you money? Have you ever had someone just invite you to dinner or pay for dinner, you know, or something like that? And, and you didn't do anything because of it. And if you can find an exception to something, like you can find evidence of that happening even once, then you know that the belief that I don't deserve good things or I only deserve things through hard work, struggle or sacrifice or effort, right? I only deserve, you know, good health if I do those things or, you know, I don't deserve good health or, or anything like that um, as a default. If we, if we hold on to that story, like, do you see how that's just going to work against us? It's going to work against everything we do, you know, and that's why identifying your beliefs is, is so important. So let's talk about this idea of, I don't deserve good things because you might be like, well, you know, Matt, I would never believe that, but let's, let's look at it. Right. Because a lot of times, again, we don't, we don't fully know what we believe. You know, like we, we assume that we believe good things for ourselves, but then we have evidence in our life that, you know, we, we oftentimes are sabotaging certain things or, um, you know, holding on to stories that are holding us back. And so let's talk about the idea of deserving, right? So deserving just means to be worthy of, and that really means to have a certain value, right? If you're worthy of something. So when you believe that you're worthy of good things, the question is, is do you believe you're just inherently worthy of good things? And, and you know, what, what I mean by that is like right now, just as you are without working or without contributing, without, without doing anything, do you believe just as you are right now that you're worthy of every good thing in this world to come to you? And I want you to sit with this question because it's an uncomfortable question, you know, because, because a lot of us may say yes but then inherently, like if, if stuff starts to come into our life, we find ourselves getting resistant. We find ourselves saying, and, and we, we find ourselves needing to try to justify that coming into our life. We, try, we, try, we find ourselves trying to, again, work for it or earn it. Or, you know, again, there has to be a, a, an exchange of somewhat. And the reality is, the reality is you, just as you are right now, are worthy of every great thing that this life has to offer. That's the truth. And when I, and, and one of the ways that we know we align with truth is because a lot of times we'll, a lot of times we have to look at other people to get that objective truth. So, you know, I, I um, was walked through an exercise one time where, you know, the person was like, I want you to imagine saying this to a baby, right? And, and like a baby in a crib. And if you said that to a baby, like, how do you feel, right? So if I told a little baby in a crib, like, oh, you don't deserve good things. Like that, that, that feeling obviously like brings me down. And that's how you, a lot of times how you feel is an indication of truth or a lie or a falsehood, right? So when you feel bad about saying something like that to a baby, it's because you know, inherently it's not true. When you look at a baby, you know, most of us at least look at that baby and say, hey, just as you are, you're deserving of every great thing that there is to offer in this world. It doesn't mean that you might not, again, have to, I'm not saying you don't have to work or, or do anything that everything's just going to come to you and you don't have to do, you just sit on the couch all day. That's not, that's not what I'm saying. What we're talking about here is just inherent worth. Your inherent worth right now, your inherent value, it's already there. It's nothing you have to do. You don't have to earn it, prove it, justify it, anything. It's already within you. That is what I'm talking about here when I talk about beliefs. So a lot of times when it comes to, you know, your own well-being, your own mental health, your own physical health, the first thing that you really have to do is start believing that you're inherently worthy of good health. And I know you might think this sounds crazy. Of course I would believe that, right? But oftentimes, you know, we have these little stories in our background, right, that are that are, again, fighting that idea. And what I encourage instead is to say, OK, hey, look, let's let's look at that and let's let's start moving from this belief of, you know, I don't deserve good things to like I I'm inherently deserving of good things. 
And, and what that means is I'm inherently deserving of, of good health. I'm inherently deserving of, you know, good relationships in my life. I'm inherently deserving of, you know, financial freedom, right? And not meaning like you don't, you don't just deserve, you know, like to take things and I'm not, I'm not talking about that, but I'm, in, I'm talking about, you don't have to justify your existence. You don't have to justify your worth. And a lot of times we're operating from stories like that. And when you can start to drop those stories and say, Hey, you know, like I don't need to justify my worth or, or my inherent deservingness anymore. You can start to allow yourself to really believe that you are deserving of these things. And yeah, sure. There's things that we have to do in our life. Yeah. We have to go to work. Yeah. We have to nurture our relationships. Yes. There's, there's things we have to do in our three dimensional world, of course. And, and I'm not in any way suggesting that, that that's not the case. What I'm talking about is, is challenging that underlying story. And that's what this series is about. It's about taking some stories that a lot of people hold on to, right? And really starting to challenge them and really starting to say, hey, you know what? With beliefs, I can change my beliefs. I might be holding on to a belief that's not serving me, in which case I can change it. And, and it truly is that easy. I mean, I mean, it's, I should say it's that simple. It's not easy to do, but it, it is that simple as saying, I'm going to adopt a different story to live from. I'm going to adopt a different story to, to operate from. And, and there's so many facets of this in which we can apply this to and look at this from, but when it comes to your health, the first thing that I think I'd want you to start looking at, you know, if you're a listener to the show is just this idea of starting to work from and, and live from this inherent place of, I deserve good health. Right there. That's it. And there's nothing, again, there's no, I don't need to put in hard work and struggle and sacrifice and effort, right? Like, yeah, sure. You know, maybe working out and stuff like this, but this is, this is even that is, is this idea of like, I need to suffer and struggle to, to achieve good health. Right. And it's, and it's this achievement oriented mindset. And again, I don't, I don't know that I really subscribe to that. Right. Because it's like, what we're talking about here is, is health, not just physically, but physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And in this idea of like, yeah, is there exercise involved in yeah, eating right and all that stuff. But the reason that you eat right. And the reason that you work out is because you already start with the idea that you're deserving of it. So because you believe you're deserving of it, you do those things, not I'm going to prove that I'm worthy of it by doing these things and then have it. It's this idea of I start with the idea of I'm, I'm inherently worthy of it. And when you start there, you're going to find that when you have that belief, you're going to start making behavioral choices that are aligned with that belief, which generally include eating better, drinking more water, right? You know, or, or like, you know, doing and not engaging in mental compulsions, right? You know, doing things that investing in yourself, right? These things come as a byproduct of believing first. So I hope this makes sense. And, and again, I'm really excited for this series because I've wanted to do this for a while. So, um, you know, and, and what we're going to do is as we go through the series, I'm going to talk about four major beliefs that, um, that, I, that often hold people back. So I'm going to dive into um, in the next three episodes, I'm going to dive into each one of those. So thank you for taking the time to hang out today. I hope this was helpful. And, um, and again, obviously leave any comments, um, questions in the, in the notes and stuff. Uh, you can also check out the free resources that we have for you in the notes, as well as our two day workshop. Um, if you're looking for, you know, additional information on this and, and again, in our taking back control program, right. You know, we have a whole section just on belief restructuring, um, which again is, is very, very powerful work. So thank you for hanging out today. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Thank you so much for watching that video. And so if you're struggling with OCD and anxiety, I just wanted to let you know that we have a free training for you um, over at Restored Minds where you can start learning how to use our AAA response to really break out of that loop and ultimately take back control of your life. And all you need to do to get access is just click the little link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can register today. Thank you so much.